I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on combinatorics. In this video, we'll discuss binomial theorem. We were introduced to binomial theorem while studying about Pascal's triangle, and we saw a very close relation between the numbers in the Pascal's triangle and the coefficients of binomial expansion. Now we'll start from there and explore more about binomial theorem. We are going to discuss 15 examination questions in this particular video. So this video could be pretty long. Let's begin with the very basic concepts as we did earlier also while discussing Pascal's theorem. You can see the Pascal's triangle on the right hand side and a correlation which we are going to repeat for binomial expansion. So in the binomial expansion and Pascal's triangle, there's a very strong link. We know that all these terms in a particular row of a Pascal's triangle are the coefficients in the binomial expansion. Now it's very important to understand that this row, as far as the triangle is concerned, is row number what? Let's write down. This is row number zero. It begins with row number zero in Pascal's triangle. So now here we have row number one, two, and this one here is row number three. Now that is row number three when we say n equals to three. Right? So this is the n value in Pascal's triangle. However, if you count the rows otherwise, right? So otherwise, we should say in general, We'll call this as what? This is our first row, right? This is our first row. That is the second row. This is the third row. And the row which we are discussing now is the fourth row. So it is important to note that when reference from outside, outside means what? Outside means outside of uh, Pascal's triangle is being made. So when reference from outside is made to Pascal's triangle, in that case, we'll call this as the fourth row. You get my idea, right? So. So this is very critical to understand. So every row in the Pascal's triangle, when you are working with Pascal's triangle, starts with row number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. However, when we look at the triangle from binomial theorem point of view, we don't see that number 0. We say, well, first row, second row, third row, fourth row. So in the fourth row, what do we have? We have these coefficients which corresponds to a plus b whole cube coefficients, correct? That is what I'm trying to emphasize. So I'm writing here once again in a different format. So this we'll be calling as the fourth row when we are referring to the Pascal's triangle from outside, correct? So that is what is very important to understand. So. Binomial coefficients are related with the terms in the Pascal's triangle, as you know. And now, what we're emphasizing is that the row n of the Pascal's triangle is n plus 1th row in the Pascal's triangle that gives coefficients of a plus b to the power of n. That is what we're trying to emphasize now. Is that clear to you, right? Now, knowing the rows element, we can definitely expand any binomial. Perfect. Now the question here is related to the concept which we just learned, which is state the row of Pascal's triangle that would give the coefficient of expansion 21 minus 22x to the power of 23. So that is your question. So the row number is what? When the index of binomial expansion is 23. Row number should be 23 plus 1. And so we have to look for 24th row in Pascal's triangle. Is that clear to you? Perfect. Now, let's take the uh, next slide, which we'll now discuss about <clears throat> how
how do we multiply the expressions, right? Especially when binomials are involved, correct? So when we multiply the binomial expressions, it is the coefficients which play a major role, correct? We know that in the expansion, there is a order of the two elements and their degrees. They always add up to the, we have to follow the exponent's law basically, correct? So the question here for you is to understand the strategy to multiply by coefficients, correct? So we know that a plus b to the power of four can be written as a plus b whole cube times a plus b. So the idea is to start from very simple concepts and then build on that, correct? We know what a plus b whole cube is. It is a cube plus 3a square b plus 3ab square plus b cube. We can multiply this by a plus b. And when you do so, you get a plus b to the power of 4 and the coefficients will match with the fifth row of Pascal's triangle <clears throat> where n is 4, correct? <clears throat> So that is your fifth row. Now, this kind of multiplication can also be done on a tabular form. Now this I'm doing only to show you the process and see how these numbers, which I've written on the side, gets affected and how we get the result very easily by only considering the coefficients, correct? Now, look here, we have A plus B whole cube. The expansion is given here and we are multiplying this by a plus b. So when you multiply by a plus b, you can write like this. Instead of writing on the right side, we are writing on the left side for a reason. Now, if I multiply with a, this is the leading coefficient, then what do I get? So when I multiply with a, I get this a to the power of four, put it with a cube. When I multiply the term a square b times three, then you get this term, perfect, and so on. So we, the terms which are written in the third row here are product of A with A plus B whole cube. So that is the distributive property you know about, perfect. Now, we'll apply the multiplication with B. Now the place value of B is 10 less than that of A, correct? So we have to shift to a position right, right? So this is because of the place value. So adjusting for the place value, when you multiply with B, the term, the product will be written right there in a place value, which is 10 less, 10 times less. Do you see that part, right? So, so with B, those are your results. Now, as in product, you add them. When you add them, you get your answer, right? So that is the product, which is a to the power of 4 plus 4a cube b plus 6a square b square plus 4a b cube plus b to the power of 4. And that becomes an expansion for a plus b to the power of 4. Clear? Now, see how we could also do the same thing using just the coefficients. So if you consider the coefficients, which are 1, 3, 3, 1, right, multiplied by A, and when you multiply by B, you shift the position right since the place value is 10 times less. And then you add them up and you get the coefficients 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And that is what it is. Do you see that? 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And so instead of writing all the terms, in shortcut, just as we did synthetic division, right? You remember? So this is the process of multiplication. You could always work with coefficients, correct? That's the whole idea. So that is what we call strategy to multiply by coefficients. Extremely efficient way of doing it. Now, let's take up an example. Uh, and that is, we will not find the powers or the coefficients for a plus b to the power of 5 by multiplication, correct? Now, here it is. We have this particular row, which is the fifth row and gives you the coefficients for a plus b to the power of 4. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. You just shifted a position, place value, and when you add them up, what do you get? You get the coefficients for 
a plus b to the power of 5. Do you see that? So we get 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. And that is what is written there in the sixth row of Pascal's triangle. Correct? That's how it is. Now, it is very interesting to note that all these coefficients are basically product of 11 to the power of 5. Since you are multiplying by a plus b, right? The coefficients of a plus b is 1 and 1. But in that particular case, do you see the number 10 here, right? Normally, when you do the numbers, you will carry forward one to the other side. And when you do that, in that case, the number which you get will be 0 instead of 10. And when you carry forward 1 there, you get 1. <clears throat> and then further carry forward 1 will give you 6 instead of 5. So now, the idea here is this is the number 11 to the power of 5. Correct? Can you connect this with coefficients? So that is an exercise. Try to think how these coefficients can be connected with the products of 11 or the power of 11, right? So if I want to find the coefficients of, let's say, 10th row, I can do 11 to the power of 10 and write them with the place adjustment. And then you will actually get the answer. Interesting. Okay, let's move on. And now we'll just cover up the notations which we have been learning now, I've just compiled all the notations at one place so that moving forward is not a problem. So one of these notations is the sigma notation, which we use to write in very short form the series of addition, right? Even expansion of a plus b to the power of n can be written with sigma notation. And in most of the time, we are doing so, correct? So now, let's understand. If I have a plus b to the power of n, I can always write this as the sigma means sum of all the elements where r is going from 0 to n. And then we have the coefficient, which is n choose r, a to the power of n minus r, b to the power of r. Correct? And in this, r is between 0 and n, both included. So n choose r is the binomial coefficient in this particular case. So if r is 0, it will be nc0 or a to the power of n and <clears throat> b to the power of 0 is 1. Plus, when r is 1, it will be nc1, a to the power of n minus 1, b. Plus, when r is 2 and so on, we can just expand it, right? The term which we write here in this choose form, ncr form, can be written in many different ways. You could write this as NCR, right? Sometimes we also write this as CNR, just as in Pascal's triangle, we are referring to elements with TNR. Perfect. So that is another way of representing it. <clears throat> it is read as NCR or N choose R, correct? So that is how it is actually read. Now, it signifies what? What is the importance of what is the importance of NCR or N choose R? This is what we should also understand before moving forward, right? It basically means what? It comes from the selection or <clears throat> to randomly select items from a group. How many ways are there to select R items? from a group of n items. That is what this NCR gives you or N choose R gives you. That is that number, right? So it really signifies the number of choices to select R elements from a group of n elements. Do you understand that? So that is a significance. There's a lot of meaning to it. It can be calculated as follows. So there's an easy calculation. Also, NCR or N choose R is equals to n factorial divided by n minus r factorial times r factorial, where n factorial is a short form of writing the product of natural numbers from 1 to n, right? Now, in Pascal's triangle, it provides direct values for n choose r, where n choose r is same as t and r. Perfect. 
Now, TNR is the value of rth rho in nth row of Pascal's triangle. Since the rows in Pascal's triangle are counted from zero, this nth row is actually n plus one nth row in the triangle. So in Pascal's triangle, the first row is numbered as n equals to zero. So when we make the reference, if I say that the coefficients of a plus b to the power seven, we're looking at n equals to seven, which is the eighth row, seven plus one, in the triangle itself. Now, based on this knowledge, we will have uh, some more explanation and examples. So we'll now begin with example number one and see how do we expand binomial expansions, which is a plus b to the power of six is an example. Perfect. But before that, again, we know what a plus b to the power of n is. So in sigma notation, it is written as sigma r equals to 0 to n and choose r a to the power of n minus r times b to the power of r. In expanded form, that is how you write it, correct? So we will have n plus 1 terms in this expanded form. Now here is summary of uh, some common features of this binomial expansion. So let's go through them one by one before really getting into a set of 15 questions which prepare you for examination on this topic. Now, the number of terms in expansion of a plus b to the power of n is n plus 1. The degree of polynomial in the expansion of n is n, right? The sum of expansion of each term in a plus b to the power of n is n, the sum of exponents, right? Sum of exponents. Now, the coefficient terms equidistant from beginning and end are equal. So ncr is equals to nc n minus r. So they are that is a symmetry. All expansions show a decreasing power of a. We're talking about a plus b to the power of n and increasing power of b. The sum is always n, correct? The terms in the expansion a minus b to the power of n are alternatively positive and negative. The coefficients are exactly the numbers in the Pascal's triangle. So these are important features which you should remember. Now, with that, let's begin our exercise to get ready for a test on binomial theorem. Example number one, a plus b to the power of six. So what you need to do here is either you write in the expanded form of binomial expansion where the first coefficient is to be 6c0. Then the coefficient will be 6c1, 6c2, 6c3, 6c4, 6c5, and 6c6. You could do that. Or you could look into the Pascal's triangle, pick up the coefficients which are in the seventh row, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, and 1. So you can write all these coefficients straight away. Now the second part here is to write the terms a plus b, starting with the highest degree of 6 with a and then distributing. The degree for a decreases and for b increases. So we get a to the power of 5 times b, a to the power of 4, b squared, a cubed, b cubed, a squared, b to the power of 4, a b to the power of 5 and b to the power of 6. So you can see very clearly that the coefficients match with either TNR or CNR. Both are same things, correct? And the degrees add up to 6. If we are talking about A plus B to the power of 6, how many terms should we have? We should have 7 terms. So now, look back at the points which we have given and they really match and help you to move forward. Perfect. Now, here is a question for you. And this time, let us say we're talking about some big number and we are only interested in calculating few coefficients of that number. How do we do so? This is what we are going to learn now, right? So binomial co coefficients in factorial form, that is what we will see. Now, let's take an example when we have a plus b to the power of 8. The coefficients are these, correct? And with symmetry, those will be there for 
the other side. This is from Pascal's triangle, right? So in Pascal's triangle, when we have the, so let me write down Pascal's triangle here. So in Pascal's triangle, when n equals to 8, then we have the coefficients as 1, 8, and so on. The idea is, how do we calculate these coefficients, right? So, so we are calculating 8 CR. Let's say this is what we are calculating now. So how do we calculate that? Now, here, n equals to 0, which corresponds to 8 C0. And that is easy. It is 1, right? 8 CN and 8 C0 will be 1. So that we know. Well, because of the symmetry, I've only taken till the center, right? Those reflection property will be used, correct? Symmetrical. Now, the coefficient for 8, the second coefficient here is 8, and that can be written as 1 times 8 over 1. And that 28, you can get 1 times 8 over 1 times 7 over 2. Well, calculate and check. 8 times 7 is 56, half of that is 28. It works. Now, we just multiply 28 by 6 over 3, which is twice 28, and gives you 56. And to this number, if you multiply by 5 over 4, we get the number 70, which is the next coefficient. So repeated multiplication of a fraction, as shown here, helps to find the next coefficient, right? So this is what we did. So what is the process here? The process here is repeated multiplication as we have seen by the fraction, correct? Gives you the next number. So now, in short, we will analyze this part also, but all of them give you the correct value of CNR or TNR, right? Now, let us see what exactly we did. So let us consider one particular element here. So we'll consider 8CR. 8CR calculation is 8 times 7 times 6 divided by 1 times 2 times 3. So it is 8 times 7 times 6 divided by 1 times 2 times 3. Now, to this, what I'm doing here is I'm adding 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 in the numerator as a multiplication. So we are multiplying the given term with 1, basically, 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 in both numerator and denominator. So we are not really changing the value. Perfect. But it results into something very interesting. You see now the numerator is 8 factorial and the denominator can be, writed, can be written as 3 factorial times 5 factorial. That gives us the formula for NCR in general, which will be N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. Perfect. Now it really helps. So this example here helps you to calculate the value. So what is 10 C4? Well, 10, 9, 8, 7, 4 terms, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 terms. And when you do that, multiplication, you get your answer, right? So simple as that. And this is also very simple. Just cancel as many terms as you can, 3 times 3. And now, see, 7 times 3 times 10 is indeed 210. And that is how easily, without calculator, you are going to calculate the coefficients. So remember, one of your exam could be without calculator. And this is a key to answer in that particular test paper. Now, here is the next example. We are now looking at the coefficients of binomial expansions. So we are again placing this thing on the top only to remember, right? So the thing starts from here, example two, the binomial coefficients. The question for you here is, Find the coefficient of each of the following, a to the power of 4, b to the power of 8, in the expansion a plus b to the power of 12, p to the power of 5, in 1 minus p to the power of 11, x to the power of 4, y to the power of 12, in 2x minus y to the power of 16. Now, these examples are very carefully taken and try to understand the significance of these examples which will help you in examination so i have also included the terms with these <coughs> terms okay <clears throat> so a to the power of 4 b to the power of 8 you will see in the term 
where the coefficient will be 12C8, simply because 12 is the n value, right? That is the expansion. And since the b power is 8, that becomes 8. So make that connection. So 12C8, a to the power of 4, b to the power of 8. Now we need to evaluate the value for 12C8. So that means we're looking for eight terms, 1 to 8 in the denominator and the reverse order from 12 in the numerator. You can always multiply after simplifying and get the result, which will be 495. Now let's look into the next case, which is p to the power of 5. Now 11 is n, that goes there, and 5 is the p terms index, so this comes here. So that is how we have 11, you know, choose 5 as our coefficient. But now the terms are different. We have 1, so 1 to the power of 6, which is 11 minus 5, and minus p to the power of 5. That minus gives you a negative coefficient in the answer. So don't forget that. As I forgot to write here, correct. So it should have been minus. So this answer is equals to minus 462. Is that clear? So that is how you have to write the answer, the negative coefficient for this particular example. Now in the next example, what I've done here is, which is very critical for you to understand, the power, the n value is positive, is the even 16 right so minus y when we put it to the power of 16 which is positive right so uh, 12 12 which is positive right y to the power of 12 we're talking about this 12 right so which is this 12 correct? which is positive do you see that so minus y to the power of 12 is positive and there we have a positive coefficient right even when we have negative y there. Only the alternating terms will have negative sign. Remember that, not all the terms. Correct. That's the whole idea. Now, here is the next example. So, we are actually now focusing on the alternate terms. So, example 3 is alternate negative terms. Correct. We need to expand 2x minus 3y to the power of 4. So, you can always pick up the fifth row, which is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And those will be your coefficient when you expand. Remember a and b. This time a and b is a is 2x and b is minus 3y. Because of this minus 3y thing, do you see that? All the odd powers will be negative. And so we are going to get alternating negative terms in our answer as you can clearly see. So that is kind of important to understand. And you can multiply all of the coefficients and get the result as shown here. You can always pause this video, do this yourself, and then move on since this is examination practice. Next example is to write down the product with exponents, right? So we are not directly taking, sometimes in the question we need to expand, right, and show the distributive property. So the question here is, write the expansion for 1 plus 2x times 1 minus 3x whole cube, since those two binomials are different, right? So they have now to be multiplied using distributive property. So of course, you will expand this first and then multiply, so you are using the distributive property. So what I've done here is, I've written the expansion of the term, which is 1 minus 3x whole cube, and simplified it and written is at 1 minus 9x plus 27x squared minus 27x cubed. And in the next step, we have multiplied that with 1 minus 2x, and that is the distributive property I was talking about. So you can multiply, simplify, and then write down your answer as shown here. Perfect. These questions are for you to try and check your answers. Now, the next one here is how do we expand when the reciprocals are involved? So in this particular question, you have to write an expansion for x minus 1 over x to the power of 5. You can pause the video, answer your question, and then look into my solution. Be careful about the alternating negative signs, right? That is kind of important. To the power of 5 means you're looking at the sixth row where the coefficients are 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. In example number 6, 
we have the radicals involved. So this is, this is the variety which is very important for you to practice before the test. So we will now expand square root of x minus 2 over square root of x to the power of 4. How will you do it? Well, you're going to pick up all the coefficients from the fifth row, which is 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 highlighted here. And then you'll just place those numbers in the very beginning and write your expansion in the form of a and b, which should be a to the power of 4, a cube b, a square b square, a b cube, b to the power of 4, with the coefficients which are highlighted. Now replace a with square root of x and b with minus 2 over square root of x, and then simplify and get your result. Some of you may like to write that square root thing with a negative exponent as shown here. No harm done. You can do that. So I've just been very flexible because it's just your choice to simplify. But the idea here is to get the right result. Once you simplify and do your question, you can always match the answer. Let's move on and take the next question. So in this particular case, it's a very, very important question. We are trying to approximate, right? So this is a challenge question here and many times seen as a bonus question also in some test papers. So example seven is to approximate the value, especially when the powers are given for very small numbers, right? So the question is 0 0.99 to the power of five is what? So 0.99 could be written as one minus 0 0.01, correct? And now you can expand using binomial theorem. Perfect, this is what you know, to the power of five. You know that power of 5 means 6th row, and then you can pick up those coefficients 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, and then 1 minus 0 0.01, well, it could be written as 1 over 100, right? It's a very small number when you're looking into its powers, right? And therefore, those powers can be neglected, and that is what we call approximation. Do you understand? So when you expand, you get 1 plus 5, and this is minus 1 over 100. So you put that minus 1 over 100 for that term B in each one of these and then calculate your answer. Well, this question is without calculator, so you have to do it manually without calculator, right? So what you get here is 1 minus 5 over 100, 10 over 10,000, and so the numbers become smaller and smaller. So what you can do is you can neglect the terms fourth and fifth especially, right? So in that case, we can neglect these terms, correct? And we can just consider the first three or four terms. You can neglect this also. Perfect. So once you do that, then clearly the first term is 1 minus 0 0.05 plus 0 0.001. And that gives you an approximate value, correct, to three decimal places, which is 0. 951. So in this case, you get three significant figures, right? Correct answer. That is how you approximate, right? Now here is another very important question. And this time, the question here is divisibility concept. So in any test paper on binomial theorem, there is a variety of questions. First is simple expansions, then expansions with radicals, and then you get into some thinking questions, which involve, like we just see, approximation, right? And then now, divisibility. Now, the question here is, prove that a to the power of n minus b to the power of n is divisible by a minus 1. Look at this strategy, because many times, we'll not write a, we may write just 2 to the power of something, 5 to the power of something, right? Correct? And say divisible by 7, something like this. Do you understand? So, it's very critical question. Now here, minus b signifies that we will have alternating negative sign, remember that. But the key here is this particular step, and this is kind of a very important step to understand. a to the power of n minus b to the power of n is divisible by a minus b. What we start with is writing a to the power of n as, so I replaced a with a minus b plus b. Right, so I replaced a with a minus b plus b to the power of n. And I've clubbed the first two terms, made it like a binomial expansion, right? So a minus b plus b to the power of n 
we can now use the binomial expansion and then we could actually get our result. So as you can see, a to the power of n minus b to the power of n has been derived in a very different way. We just begin with what a to the power of n is. Writing a as a minus b plus b and clubbing a minus b as one term and plus b as the second, we have now a binomial which can be expanded. This is also a strategy to actually expand trinomials, right? So this is also a strategy. So remember, this is relate to trinomial expansion. Is that clear to you, right? So try to see from examples, how can they help you in examination? Okay, so we have these coefficients written there. We are not writing any numbers. We cannot because we don't know what n is. Therefore, now you see the importance of n choose 0 or n choose r to be written there. And a minus b is your first term with the power of n. And next time we get a minus b to the power of n minus 1 with b and so on. So that is our complete expansion. Now clearly, the last term here is n choose n b to the power of n, whose value is 1. So you can also bring this to the left-hand side. When you bring it to the left-hand side, now we get a factor, a to the power of n minus b to the power of n. On the right side, we have a minus b as a common factor, and which you factor out, and clearly that becomes a factor of the whole thing. And therefore, we can say that a to the power of n minus b to the power of n is divisible by a minus b, right? Do you see that part? And that is how we can prove it. Important strategy for solving such questions. Now let's take the next example, which is kind of very important again. So it is again with the same divisibility concept thing. Uh, what we are doing here, how, is slightly different. Uh, find a plus b to the power of four minus a minus b to the power of 4. Well, so this basically also will lead to uh, even and odd terms, right? So we'll also look into even and odd terms. Okay, so it will be related with that. Anyway, so basically we'll see how this expansion of a plus b to the power of n minus a minus b to the power of n is related with solving such questions. And therefore, we have written this particular formula for you. So if I have a plus b to the power of n minus a minus b to the power of n. Now here we have alternating positive and negative signs. So when you take away those negative signs become positive, positive becomes negative. So you get twice the odd terms. So this is the, the thing, right? So we have these as the odd terms, right? times 2. They add up. The other terms cancel away. And that's what you get as your result. So we're just substituting the values with n value of 4 to further solve this particular question, right? So we have now 2 times 4 choose 1 a cube b, 4 choose 3 a b cube. So those are the two terms left. The others cancelled out. And now we can just simplify by putting the value of what is 4 choose 1 and 4 choose 3, which is 4 and 4 in this particular case from the symmetry. Multiplied by 2 gives you 8ab a square plus b square. So what we get here is simplified expression. Now when you get the simplified expression, then you substitute. the value of a and b. You get the point, right? So then we substitute the value of a is square root of 3 and b square root of 2. And when you do that, in the simplified expression, which is right there, you get your answer. And in this case, it is 40 square root 6. You get the idea, right? So normally, in this question, many times what I've seen here is, they will say, well, they will say that square root of 3 plus square root of 2 to the power of 4 minus square root of 3 minus square root of 2 to the power of 4 is equals to, let's say, some number a square root, let us say 6, find a. 
that could be a question in the test paper, for example, right? So they could have written something else also in the square root of the radical sign, right? And you could have find A, B, and C, something like this. Okay, clear. Next question is, well, similar to what we did just now, it is sum of powers and conjugate. That's the right term. Now, A plus B and A minus B, these are the conjugates. Do you understand? So we are adding them up. And that is what we are saying. Sum of powers means we are adding them up. So that is the right title for this particular case. And this time what we have done is we have added uh, some radicals, which is square root of 2 plus 1 to the power of 6 minus. Uh, I wrote minus. Okay. That was a typing error. Okay. This is plus in this particular case. We're trying to see what happens when it is plus. So when it is plus, then the even terms get added up, right? So in that case, the even terms get added up, right? So in this case, even terms added. <clears throat> I, I shouldn't say even because, uh, sorry, uh, it looks like even, but NC0 is odd terms, right? Strictly speaking, these are the odd terms, right? So even alternating terms will double up. I've written that, uh, but however, uh, when we write NC0, and nc2 uh, and that is the first term right so the first term is not even term okay uh, but we are looking into the coefficient part and so i've written that even term uh, i should strictly not be using this term even term here okay so alternating negative terms will double up the ones which were positive that's what even coefficient even degree you can say right so so the terms which have even degree that is better to uh, otherwise we'll get confused about even and odd terms i'll discuss that later okay <clears throat> now so so wherever the degree is even minus will become positive and those are the terms which will add up and the others where the degree is odd those terms will have negative b result and they will cancel that's the whole idea so we just expand this and this time it is to the power of six and we use that simplify our expression once you simplify the expression substitute the value of a and b as shown here and then get your result right that is the shortcut way of doing it so the important thing is to understand the steps involved in solving such a question clear okay so if there are any difficulties you can always post those difficulties write your comments and that should help now let's move forward with last few very important questions. Now here we have been talking about how do we expand a trinomial, right? So I've taken a simple example to make you understand this strategy. So the idea is to club them. And in this case, since we have one plus X plus X squared whole cube, what should we club? Well, definitely we should keep one separate. We can club X and X squared. And that's what we did. So we wrote X and X squared as Y. And then this term will become 1 plus Y whole cube, expand and simplify as we have done. And now replace Y with X plus X squared as you have seen here, correct? Once you replace Y, and then you can expand and simplify to get your result. So this is a very important question. So sometimes you may have to expand with trinomials. So in that case, clubbing two of them will make them a binomial, right? So that is the kind of key to do this particular question. Have a good look at it, practice, and then check your solution. Perfect. Let's move on and take example 12. Now in this particular case, what is the question? Question example 12 is uh, calculator function ncr well sometimes the calculator is allowed and it is when the calculator is allowed what can you do in the expansion of x plus 5 to the power of 17 see the powers are very high there is a term x to the power of k y to the power of 9 related to this the question is determine the value of k well that is simple the sum should always be 17 and so we can find the value of k it should be 8 now the second part is Determine the coefficient of this term. Well, the coefficient will be 17, choose 9. And for that, you may need calculator. That's what I was getting to. Or if not, use the formula and get the answer or write it in this particular factorial form. No harm done. Okay. 
Example 13 here is to in the expansion of 1 plus x to the power of n, the first three terms are 1 minus 18 plus 144. Determine the value of x and n. Well, that's the question. You have to find the value of x and n. We are given a polynomial right there. This is very interesting and important question. Always there in thinking and applications. Perfect. We know what is the expansion of 1 plus x to the power of n that is given to you right there. Now, if you compare this particular expansion, then what do you see? The first three terms we are looking into, right? So we are looking into the first three terms, which are 1 minus 18 and 144. So clearly, the second term is minus 18, which is right there, right? Second term is minus 18. So this term here is an x in the expansion, right? So 1 to the power of negative. Well, n minus 1, x is there written there, right? So what we'll get here is n x is equals to minus 18. So comparing this with that. So from here, we get the value of x in terms of n, which is minus 18 over n. Perfect. So that's how you get it. Now, the, the term, which is the second term, is what? The second term here is let me highlight with a different color that is the second term which should be equal to 144 so we have two equations and two unknowns and we can always solve for both the values correct so we have one equation as x equals to 18 over n with the negative sign and the second equation where we have n choose 2 x squared equals to 144 so let's work to simplify the equation 2 right there okay so n choose 2 is can, is equals to n factorial over n minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial x squared equals to 144. And when you do this expansion with the substitution, so we substituted the value of x. So the value of x has been substituted as minus 18 over n. And now you can simplify. There's only one variable unknown n. And so when you do this calculation as shown here, you get a quadratic equation to uh, get a linear the quadratic equation cancels okay that's good so it's a simpler equation to work with uh, you get a linear equation you could find the value of n so once you find that n is 9 substitute 9 and then get the value of x and that is how you do it right so sometimes you have to correlate match the with the polynomials given to you and in this particular case it's a very important question from test point of view now let's look into example 14 where we need to prove that sigma r goes from 0 to n for n choose r, 4 to the power of r is equals to 5 to the power of n. This is what we need to prove. Here is a very simple proof for the same. Have a good look at it. Try to understand what we have done. Well, the expansion for 1 plus x to the power of n is just given to you for your reference. Correct? So that is your reference. Now, in this particular expansion, you substitute x as equals to 4 on both the sides. So when you do that, 1 plus 4 is 5. Do you see that? So we get 5 to the power of n on one side. On the right side, you get the expansion. And that is how you prove it. So that is how it could be done very easily. However, this strategy is important, correct? So you have to understand this strategy that prepares you for examination. We are almost at the end. Last two questions. Okay. Question number 15 is, which is larger? You can actually compare two numbers with high index using binomial expansion and approximation techniques. We need to show that 1.01 to the power of how many zeros? 1 million, right? There are six zeros. 1 million is greater than 10,000. This is what we need to show. How can we do it? Well, we will expand using binomial expansion and approximate this value, which is supposed to be higher. Let's work on that, right? 10,000 is known to us, is a fixed number, which is known to us. So we can write this 1, 1 plus 0 0.01 as 1.01 .01, and then expand. Now we have two terms, 1 and 0 0.01. So when you expand, you get all this, correct? You get all this. Now, definitely, 
Since b is a very small number, you can always neglect the rest of the numbers. Just pick up the first three. So that is kind of key in most of the cases where we have a plus b and b is very small. Correct? So this kind of thing we always do when we have something like a plus b to the power of n, uh, where b is very, very small as compared to 1, uh, neglect or you say retain approximate first. Okay, so we say just take first three terms, right? So take three terms. Is that clear? So you can neglect the others uh, and take just the first three terms. So that is what we did in this particular case also. So here we actually took just first two terms. Okay, so the first term is of course one and the second term is uh, this number uh, times 0 0.01 and the other positive terms. The key is all of the terms are positive, right? So the number will be greater than the sum of the first two. The sum of the first two itself is 10,001, right? 10,001, uh, which is greater than 10,000. And so we can say that this is greater, correct? So we got 10,001. So very critically chosen values. Perfect. Okay. Now, here is the last example for you. So what you need to do is you can now pause the video, answer this particular question, and then look into my suggestions, correct? And I hope with this, you're absolutely prepared for your test. So we had some confusion about how hard and the even terms. I think with this uh, last question, uh, it'll be very clear. So when we talk about odd and even terms in binomial expansion, what do we really mean? So this is what we'll understand also. And we have used two examples uh, using this principle earlier. So we'll see how it really works. Okay. If O be the sum of odd terms and E be the sum of even terms in the expansion of A plus X plus A to the power of N, prove that odd square minus even square is X square minus A square to the power of N and four times odd and even product is X plus A to the power of 2N minus x minus a to the power of 2n that is the equation okay so let us see what these odd and even terms are so when we have x plus a to the power of n you have n choose 0 n choose 1 now basically n choose 0 n choose 1 n choose 2 we can split this into two terms one with n choose 1 n choose 2 and so on the other one with n choose 1, n choose 3, and so on. The alternating terms, is that clear to you? Now, the first set of terms is called the odd terms, and the second set is called the even terms, right? It may have 0, 2, and 4. However, it is called the odd term, mainly because this is your first term. Do you see that? This is your second term, right? That is your third term and then so on. So basically, the odd term really means what? Let us highlight the odd terms. Odd terms really means the first term, right? First term, third term, these are your odd terms, correct? So when we say terms, odd and even terms, let's write down here. So when we say odd terms, it means what? Odd terms means first, third, and so on, right? And when we say even terms, it means second, fourth, and so on, correct? So basically, in odd terms, what you have normally is n, c, 0. Do you see that? n, c, 2. These are odd terms. The even terms will be with n, c, 1 and C3. Do you see that part? So sometimes it creates a confusion. However, it's the term number, right? So, so we are actually interested in odd terms. We're looking into term number. Okay, so that is how. Odd terms will be first, third, fifth, seventh, and so on. Correct. So we split this series into sum of odd and even terms. Perfect. That's the whole idea. But when we have x minus e to the power of n, this becomes difference of odd and even terms. The same series becomes difference of odd and even terms. And so you have two series which are sum of 
odd and even and difference of odd and even and now you can answer your question so now just substitute these values right so if i just multiply these two in that case odd plus even times odd minus even will be odd square minus even square and when you multiply what do you get x square minus 8 square to the power of n and that's what we mean right that is how you prove it and that is how so we have this term which you know we, we are just using this equation now we are saying odd terms minus even terms is x plus a okay this should have been negative here i'm sorry and this equation here correct so so we have x minus a so we have x minus a as difference of odd and even x plus a to the power of n as sum of odd and even correct so when you do that so you get the product of sum of odd and even times the difference of odd and even which gives you the result correct that's how we do it now this is part a and in part b we have to just multiply them four times and then we get our result so when you multiply them four times what do you get you here is your answer you just do that and you can prove that it is equals to x plus a to the power of 2n minus x minus a to the power of 2n is that clear to you okay so basically the idea is you should know that you could always split this binomial series into two types of terms and call them odd terms and even terms and then do this manipulation it's kind of very important okay so with that we end up today's session on understanding binomial theorem and its application i hope that really helps you to understand and get ready for your exam feel free to write your comment share your views if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great thanks for your time and all the best